What's up everybody, Renfail here, and this is going to be a super fun video for me to make because I am a new player to EVE Online, or I was a new player to EVE Online in late 2023. I came into the game 20 years after it launched, which means this is the perfect opportunity to make a video that says, should you play EVE Online in 2024 as a new player? This is not a video for veteran players. This is not a video for people who are bitter and angry about the direction of the game over the past 20 years and they think that 12 years ago was the best or seven years ago was the best or the first three years were the best. This video is not for you. If you are a, a bitter, jaded player who's done your time in EVE Online, just go away and let the rest of us have our fun. Because that's the thing, this game is really fun. And if you're coming into the game in 2024 as a new player, um, I think you're going to be genuinely surprised, and I think you're going to have a lot of fun. So uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about my experience. I played the game for about three months over the last part of 2023 um, on a weekend warrior basis. So I was playing once a week, sometimes twice a week. Definitely not maining this as any sort of like main game. This was something I was treating sort of like a weekly D&D &D session where I was jumping in and you know, playing from time to time. Um, and I can tell you my experience doing it that way and why I think this is a great game for new people who are looking for something that is like what EVE Online has to offer. So, uh, before we get going, this is the part of the video where I say, don't forget, if you haven't already done so and you're new here, like, subscribe, hit the bell icon so you never miss an update. Daily streams happen at 8 a.m. Central Time, and we are multi-streaming on YouTube and Twitch, so don't forget to check us out over on Twitch every single day. Play a lot of different games, so check out all the playlists, game guides, movie reviews, TV shows, all the other stuff we do. Private member videos, if you're supporting here on YouTube, we do a lot of uh, analytics talk about the channel growth, and of course we're working on a sci-fi anthology novel with our channel members. There's a Discord, check it out, a World of Warcraft Guild 2, all sorts of stuff happens on the channel so let's talk about eve online in 2024 for new players first and foremost the idea that it is a forced pvp game there are caveats to that conversation i can tell you that in three months of playing not once not once was i ever ganked nor was i ever forced to do pvp i never interacted with another pvp person at all in the three months of playing. Instead, I had very pleasurable, is that the right word to use? Very pleasant would probably be a better word. <laughs> Makes me sound like we were doing some cybering. Um, I had very pleasant interactions with other PVE-centric players who were watching my videos and understood the, where I was coming from. And so they were coming in, sending me things, helping me out, recommending quests. Um, I found that people were very helpful um, as opposed to what a lot of the veterans were trying to claim, which was, oh, the game is just full of gankers, and I was always ganked, and that's why I quit the game, because everyone was always ganking me. Never happened to me. Now, that's not to say that no one is ever going to come after you or that no one's ever going to gank you. The caveat to my experience, and this is explained, if you watch the videos in my playlist, I talked about this three or four different times in different videos. The caveat to my experience is that I was focused on the story missions, the PVE missions, which keep you in high security space where it's pretty rare for people to go out of their way to come after you because there are repercussions for that um, and then they will get taken out. So um, if you're in high security space, the chances of you getting attacked are going to be, I wouldn't say zero, but next to zero based on my experience and based upon all the people I talked to. Don't take my word for it. Watch the other videos in my playlist. Look at all the comments from other players. We had a lot of PVE only players who have been playing for six, seven, eight, ten years and have only had one or two bad experiences out of the whole time. Um, and those were almost all experiences where they were, you know, running a super uh, heavy load where it was like their cargo hold was full of like you know, resources worth millions of credits or they were running a super expensive ship. I'm not doing any of those things because I'm just, I'm, this is literally a free ship. It's one of the, I don't know, five or six free ships that I've gotten from running story missions. I don't ever run around anything in my cargo hold because I'm just running story missions and those only have story items that they give you. So I'm not running around with anything of value. And because I'm playing the game in a very much sort of like a single player RPG manner, no one ever is going to go out of their way to come after me because unless it's like a somebody just trying to stream snipe me or something, which honestly that never happened either. I kept asking people, I was like, when is someone going to gank me? And it never happened. So I could say that after my three months of playing, it was a very pleasurable experience. Um, I did play it as a single player RPG. 
Um, you can group up with other players if you want to. There's that content if you want to. But also, there is literally, there are hundreds of hours of single player storyline RPGs stories that you can go through that don't ever require you to meet up with another person. And that's the part that I want to talk about next, which is um, going into the agency, which it says find activities to suit your interests. Let's get a sip of my rum and coke here before we keep going. All right, so if you click this agency button, it's gonna bring up this window right here, which this is the window for all of the story missions that you're gonna be able to find if you wanna play this game from the perspective of a single player RPG PVE game, right? So it starts off with agents and missions, uh, agents offering a variety of contract work for various competing factions and corporations of New Eden. Then there's encounters, which allow you to explore the diverse activities, challenges, and other unique events found throughout the galaxy. And then there's exploration, tracking down and exploring sites and hidden signatures within systems. And then resource harvesting. Mine, harvest and extract the raw resources needed to construct ships, modules, and structures. Now, I would say that out of all of these, the first ones, agents and missions, is where I have focused the vast majority of my time. And those are the storyline missions where no one's going to come after you because you're doing story stuff. Uh, exploration and resource harvesting is where things can get dicey because now you're talking about resources. Now you're talking about going somewhere and finding things and bringing it back to a base and you're going through you know, low security space where people can come after you without repercussions. So just these are caveats to keep in mind. But if you're a storyline person and you're looking for a story, you can go in here to the story agents missions and you can find this whole track, this series of missions that you can look for. There's Paragon agents which have you um, doing Paragon quests. There's mission agents, there's career agents, and then there's epic arcs. So the way that the game prompts you to go is immediately upon finishing the in-game tutorial, they prompt you to go to the career agents. And I highly suggest this because these will show you um, five different career paths that you could choose. Now these are just sort of like guiding career point. They're not things that you have to do, but they definitely are worth doing for a variety of reasons. One, you get free ships related to the career paths. So I did Enforcer right out of the gate because that was a combat-oriented um, series of tutorials, and I got some combat ships out of that. I also got all of the guns and kit to um, equip my ships for free from doing those. Now, are they the best? No, you're going to get the best by going to the market and spending lots of money isk in game and getting really cool ships that way. Um, but you can get free ships this way. I've been playing the game with only free ships. It's a great way to go. Um, there's multiple tracks. You have one for Enforcer, one for Industrials Producer, one for Explorer, one for Soldier of Fortune. Soldier of Fortune is the PvE or excuse me, PvP oriented. It does teach you a bunch of combat related stuff to PvE, but it also teaches you tactics that are useful in PvP encounters. So the Soldier of Fortune is going to be for those of you who want to start thinking ahead and maybe you want to participate in PvP. I don't, but you can. Then there's also the Industrialist Entrepreneur. Now we can go back to this and there's also uh, the Epic Arcs, which is what I graduated to after I finished up with the main story mission. So I'm currently working my way through the Bloodstained Stars arc there are 52 missions in this storyline i have done 42 of them so far and i've been working my way through them um periodically i haven't played over the holidays because i was taking a break um but now that we're back we're going to keep doing this um on a once a week basis here and there um so you can go through these storylines and there's all this other stuff in here too there's storyline agents currently unavailable there's the agent finder um, all these different things you can do and then of course going back to the home page here you have all of these different things you can do there's also home front operations um, for your faction um, so there are a ton of stories and quests that you can work on just from the agency panel in the game that doesn't require you to do anything other than just log on pick something that you want to do and start doing them. The great thing about the um, uh, the story agents as well, the, the career agents, is they're also going to teach you, um, if I open this back up again, go into the agents and missions, go to career agents. If you uh, look at one of these, um, it'll tell you like, before you head to this career agent, it's recommended that you start training this AR, AIR certified skill plan. Welcome to the channel, Leland William. Um, 
air industrials producer is what this one prompts us to do. So if we were to pick this skill plan, it would tell me, hey, do you want to start training this? And then if I did train it, it would it would automatically start training all of these abilities that it shows here. Now, if you notice, these already have check marks next to them, and that's because I've already learned all but one of these. Industry 4 is the only one that I haven't learned yet, and I'm currently in the middle of learning that right now. Um, and when you click this, when you, or excuse me, I'm not learning that one, I'm learning a different one. Um, when you click start training, it'll immediately start training something. So if I go over here, I'm currently in the training queue. Um, I work, I'm working a hauler right now, and he will tell you track skill plan hauler. So I'm doing that. I, it's got about two hours and 47 minutes left, it looks like. And it's got two skills left that it has to train. Then if I wanted to learn this one, I would go click this, so on and so forth. So you don't even have to think about what skills you want. You just choose a skill training plan and go from there. Obviously, you can learn things a la carte if you want to, but things are, are, are basically prepped and ready for you because we're looking at a game that's 20 years old and it has all these new player experiences completely mapped out so that it's really easy for the new player to get into the game and start playing. So I would say that's a, a really cool way to do things. It's a really easy way to get in. You get free ships, you get skill um, trees, you get all these things that you need to play the game. Now, there are some caveats to that as well. I've noticed that because we're dealing with some storyline content in those missions that are like, you know, 15, 20 years old, there are occasionally quirks where you might see, um, I know one was a, a quest that told me I needed to, uh, I needed to, to get something off of a space station is what the quest dialogue told me. But what in reality it wanted me to do, the objectives, which it didn't tell me, the objective was actually I needed to uh, destroy all of the enemy ships in the area first and then go loot the objective. I couldn't even loot the objective until I destroyed all the ships first. It didn't tell me that. I had to look that up online and found out that a bunch of people said, oh, by the way, this is bugged. It's a known issue. They never fixed it because it's a 15-year-old quest and it's just quirky. You will occasionally... I know I've I've played however I don't even know how many hours I've played now probably I would I would have to estimate but um, over three months of playing I only came across I think two maybe three instances of something where it didn't quite line up with what the quest dialogue was telling me and a simple Google search fixed it so that's just one of those things you can think about it's a little quirky on the back end um, so there's hundreds of hours of storyline to go through you don't have to PvP if you don't want to but if you do feel free that's when you can get into what a lot of people will argue is the heart of this game which is the pvp and if you're going to do pvp this is mostly going to be related at the higher ends of the game towards the current content which is no different than any other mmorpg out there when you start playing these games that have been around for 15 20 years all of the veteran players are pretty much at the cap playing the current content and the old content which is for new players like me there's not a lot of people around which is good and bad it's good if you don't want people to bother you in a PvP game. It's bad if you want other people that you want to play against or if you want to group up with people on a regular basis. So that's a caveat to consider. Um, I don't have a lot of experience with PvP because I don't like PvP, so uh, I can't give you much to go on of that in this video, but I can tell you it's out there if you want to participate. Um, other than that, there's a few things you need to know. Uh, it's free to play. It doesn't cost you anything to play the game. However, if you are free to play, there are some limitations. As an example, if you go into the uh, career uh, tracker here, um, you're going to notice some things where like Omega Miner, so I'm on what's called the Alpha account because I'm free to play it if you want to go to the VIP, it's called Omega. So it says Omega Miner, it requires me to have a VIP subscription, right? And then there are, there are certain ships that you can only buy if you have Omega status. There's certain skills that you can only take up to like tier four. And if you want to go higher than tier four, you need to be a VIP, which is no different than the way a lot of other MMOs do them uh, these days. You can play free to play, get you know hundreds of hours of entertainment out of the game. But if you are going to start maining this game and you want to get the best skills and you want to go do raids and you want to go do this, that, and the other and have the best ships and all this other stuff, you're going to need to go VIP. That's just one of the caveats to playing free-to-play games. You don't get everything and you don't get to have your cake and icing and ice cream and all these other things. It's like, no, there is some you know, decision-making to be done. But if you're going to play like I do, which is on a fairly casual basis, you know, I'm happy to play free-to-play and occasionally dip in and maybe buy some a la carte things from the store. 
quick commercial break, everyone, to celebrate and give thanks to all of these amazing people who keep me on the air full time. Really appreciate the support. All you got to do is join as a member. You get access to private videos. You can also do super thanks on any upload or super chats and stickers on any live stream or premiere you see. And beyond that, don't forget we're multi-streaming over on Twitch now, so you can support over there as well. Thanks so much to everybody. Let's get back to the video at hand. Now, the store is the other thing in this game, because it is free to play, which means there is a cash shop. Now, the cash shop is purely cosmetic. There are some quirky little things in here. You can get Omega. Um, you can get different things to speed up your um, your progress. Oh, that's the other thing, too, is if you're Omega, uh, your skills train a little bit faster. Matter of fact, if I go over and look, it might even tell me. Um... It takes you X amount of time. Let's close this window down. Oh, yeah, it's two times. So if you go into VIP, you're going to be training your skills at twice the speed. So if something tells you it's going to take two hours, you know, if you have that, it'll be, it'll be half the time, essentially. Um, so that's a caveat as well. But otherwise, the cash shop is mostly just for learning things a little bit quicker. Um, lots of ship skins. Lots and lots and lots of ship skins here. We can look at all these different ship skins. I mean, there's, there's a lot. There's also all the apparel. Um, which is for your character, which honestly you never really see your character, so that's not a big thing for me. And then there's the services, which are all the different um, skill injections, pilot training, alpha injectors, um, you know, hype, you know, these these different things that help speed things up for you. But there's nothing here that I wouldn't consider anything in there pay to win. I would just say that some of those things are things that will speed things up for you if you're looking at training. So it's mostly related to if you're going to be playing this game a lot and you really want to go whole hog, then you know buying things off the cash shop can speed things up. Or better yet, just go VIP and get double the spills, skill speeds, get access to all the best ships and all the best everything if you're going to go that route. Now obviously I'm just kind of covering the basics here of should you play this game in 2024 as a new player? I really think you should. Obviously, this is a ship-based game. It's very slow-paced in the PvE arena. If you're playing PvP, it's a little more fast-paced because there's lots of things you have to pay attention to to stay alive. But in terms of the PvE, it's very straightforward. You fly your ship around, you shoot at things, you mod your ship, you get gear for your ship. You can craft, you can harvest, you can do all these things. You can play the market, you can be a space trucker, you can be a bounty hunter, you can be an explorer, you can be a miner. You can literally do any of these career paths that you can think of in all these different types of ships. And, you get lo and there are a lot of ships to choose from. So at the end of the day, I would say that um, I am someone who is notoriously anti-PVP. I am 100% Care Bear, and I do not care about any of these elitist... PvP, PvP players who will make fun of that fact. I don't care. I play games to get enjoyment. I don't find it enjoyable to have other players ganking me and have to worry about that kind of game. I've always ignored and avoided PvP games because I I kind of like take the approach like when I sit down to play tabletop with my friends, if I'm going to play Dungeons and Dragons or Pathfinder with my friends, I'm sitting down at a couch with my friends looking for a interactive fun experience where we're all together working together, having fun together, working towards common goals. We don't come into the basement or the wherever, the snack room, wherever you have your tabletop room. We don't come into that tabletop space with the intent to start trying to gank each other and beat each other up and, and take each other's stuff. That's not the intent of PvE. And that's why I've always preferred PvE, because PvE is about being friendly and having fun with other people and having common goals, achieving overcoming the odds you know of the game so that's why I've always stayed away from PvP games so when I initially sat down to do my first video on this in 2023 at the end you know towards the end of the year I was making a video on first impressions like what are my first impressions of EVE Online and I was coming off of Starfield and I had such a good time that I started playing and then that turned into, oh, I'm going to record three videos, and I'm going to record five videos, and now I'm playing every Saturday, and now I'm playing Tuesdays and Saturdays. And suddenly, well, here we are in early 2024, and I'm absolutely recommending this game to people to go play, with all of the caveats that I've talked about in this video. I think it's a lot of fun for new players. Obviously, if you're a jaded ex-veteran who has all these nitpicks about why you don't like the company and all the changes they made, go on, go away. Go play other games. This is not for you. But if you're someone who's like me, you've never played it, or you haven't played it in a very long time, 
I think EVE Online is something that you're going to be pleasantly surprised with. On top of which, the game looks amazing for a 20-year-old game. Um, this is just inside of the, um, the docking area. We could go outside and check stuff out as well. And you can fly around and you just watch some of my previous videos if you want to see some of the combat and the way the game looks. Because it is, excuse me, a beautiful game. It's got a lot of content. And for a free-to-play title that you could just jump into and play around in, you really have nothing left to lose at all. I mean, there's there's nothing to lose here. So try it out. Let me know your thoughts. Drop them down in the comments below. Like, subscribe at the bell icon so you never miss an update. Daily streams at 8 a.m. here and on Twitch. Check out all the playlists, videos for the channel members, the Discord. I'll see everybody in the next one. Until then, stay safe. Happy flying, everybody.